Hi, welcome back to another session on uh, synthetic uh, fibers and plastics. Uh, this session is actually coming from uh, Navyuk Study Channel, which is a YouTube channel uh, dedicated to the uh, the school students of uh, middle and uh, high school. Uh, I would like to uh, let you know that uh, please visit our website. Please visit our website http colon slash slash Navayuk Navayuk study dot wordpress dot com to see all the videos. Uh, you can also send mails to us through using Navayuk study Navyuk dot study oh, sorry study at uh, gmail dot com dot com uh, please do visit our website and if you have any questions or queries please do send mails to Navyuk uh, dot study at gmail dot com all right so uh, let's come back to the session Let's continue. So we had uh, in the last uh, couple of sessions gone through uh, what do you mean by polymers and we have seen different types of polymers. We have seen uh, the, uh, the rayon, nylon, polyesters and uh, uh, acrylic fibers and coroseal and other different types of plastics uh, polymers that we've seen and we also seen what are their uses. Um, now we are going to continue uh, discussing further and discuss about plastic. So we have looked at fibers, the synthetic fibers and that's where rayon, nylon, polyesters and all these kind of uh, things comes up. Now uh, we are all, we now going to discuss about plastics. In fact, the even fibers are plastics. Plastics are again nothing but polymers uh, and and we are going to look at, sorry, Yes, so the student is saying that you can, in a way, you can say that synthetic fibers is in a way are synthetic plastics. That's right. So now uh, let us get into what are the raw materials from which these synthetic fibers and plastics are manufactured, right? And the 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 raw materials are typically um, petroleum products. Now, what is petroleum products? Petroleum products are in fact extracted from crude oil right as you know what is crude oil crude oil is something which uh, we extract from the mother earth uh, which has been formed because of uh, the uh, because of various uh, plants animals which have been buried down the the earth and they have transformed uh, due to natural process because of huge pressure which act on, act on them they got converted to crude oil right now the crude oil is something which we extract from other earth through using the uh, it, which happens in the oil mines it is there in various parts of the world it is there in india too uh, it is also there um, but most, mostly around middle east that is uh, places like kuwait um, qatar uh, united Ab arab emirates uh, and iran iraq and all those countries are the main producers of crude oil and from this crude oil is what we get this petroleum products uh, and it's from these crude oil we get these petroleum products like uh, ethylene, propene, benzene, toluene, all these kind of products, right? And these products are uh, can be polymerized to form polyethylene, polypropene, and uh, polystyrene, and these kind of polymers. And we are going to just get into a little more uh, uh, detail on what these ethylene, propene, benzene, toluene all look like. What is their chemical structure? right so uh, le let me start showing these one by one so let us look at uh, this ethy ethylene now the ethylene this is a three dimensional figure on how ethylene looks like right and ethylene has got two carbon atoms these are the two carbon atoms right and uh, you can see that these carbon atoms and the white are white balls are the hydrogen atoms right and uh, so it is it's what is the chemical formula the chemical formula is pretty simple. Chemical, chemical for, uh, formula is. I have to change it to black or green. Or 
Samsung to blue. It is CH2 double bar CH2. That's how you write. Why the double bar? Because between the two carbon atoms, you have what you call a double bond, right? You can see two lines there. Now, what those double bonds, what kind of bonds are they? You will learn that in details in organic chemistry, rate law, I don't want to get into that. So, um, so you can see that this is this is how the ethylene looks like. It is all. It can be called. It is also called. So it is called ethylene, or it is also called ethene. Both are the same, right? It can be called ethylene or ethene. Both are the same, and uh, this is basically the chemical formula CH2 double bar CH2, and this is how it looks like. So you have two carbon atoms and four hydrogen atoms, <coughs> right? So uh, and uh, this is the three-dimensional view of that and how uh, it looks like. Right, so I hope it is very clear how it looks like. Right, so this is about uh, ethylene. Right, now let us get into the uh, the next con. No, so now what happens if I polymerize? Now this is something we have seen before. So ethylene can be a monomer, and that ethylene can be polymerized to form polyethylene. Right, and this polymerization is something that we discussed before. But I want to just uh, kind of quickly show you. Uh, once again, how uh, that looks like. So you basically have uh, CH2, CH2, and what can happen? So it's like this, right? So you have C, H, H, double bar C, H, H, right? Now this is what is ethylene. Now what can happen in the polymerization is it can be C, H, C, H, Right, so this is one monomer molecule again linked with another monomer molecule. Right, and again this linked with another monomer molecule and so on. So ultimately we are getting what you call CH2 bar CH2N. Millions of molecules, ethylene molecules, are polymerized. Right, and that leads to forming of the polyethene. This is something we've discussed in the beginning, right? But um, I'm just reiterating. So this is a polyethene uh, molecule, and how the polymerization happens. We have looked at this right, right now. I hope this is clear. Sure. Yeah. Um, that um, here my, in that high, the, you show that the ethene, how that ethene, this thing, the, how are those, are those two carbon atoms being uh, bonded to the two uh, yes. hydrogen atoms? Yes. Yes. Like, what are those bonds for? Yeah. So uh, the the question, very 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 good question from the students. What the student is asking is, why are those bonds there? You saw those lines, right, linking the atoms. Why are those bonds there? Those bonds are what are responsible for binding those atoms together, because and and keeping those and that basic those bonds hold the atoms together to create the molecule. Without those bonds, the atoms would have been moving around, right? But those bonds are the ones which keep the atoms together, and that is gives the molecular structure. That gives a molecular structure, and that molecular structure is what gives the physical and chemical properties of that molecule. So those bonds are extremely important. Without those bonds, the atoms will not be held together. And if the atoms are not held together, no there is no ethene. Absolutely, it becomes two carbon atoms, four hydrogen atoms. Separated. Yes, but because those they are separated, as student is saying, but because those bonds are there between these atoms. That is what makes a molecule, and it gives and it gets a specific structure. And because it's got a specific molecular structure, is why we have the ethene has certain physical properties and certain chemical properties. So that's a very good question, and this is basically what the answer is at a very high level, right? Now we will get into what kind. There are different types of bonds that are called ionic bonds. Then there are what is called uh, a covalent bond. There is a what you call a pi bond, sigma bond. There are different types of bonds. These, the the line that you saw between carbon and two carbon atoms, and between carbon and hydrogen, they are called bonds. Uh, that 
that requires that requires another detailed discussion right so we will not get into that but i am sure that you learn that soon right so i think maybe in ninth or 10th in organic, uh, in organic chemistry you learn about uh, the uh, the non ionic bonds right and in uh, uh, in inorganic chemistry which is about metals and yes and you will actually learn about uh, ionic bonds in the case of in the case of inorganic chemistry right so we'll discuss that later so don't worry about that we'll come to that later right okay so that is about ethene and polyethene right now let us look at the next one which we talked about which is propene right now this is what is propene right now this is a propene atom it's got three carbon atoms right it has got three carbon atoms and it has got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, six hydrogen atoms, right? This is propene, right? So it is written as follows. The propene is written as follows. It's written as CH2 double bar CH single bar CH3, right? This is how you write it. Uh, um, you know. Uh, it, just as formula it can be written as C3H6 right but this is how you write it in organic chemistry CH2 double bar CH single bar CH3 right now this is propene again another petroleum product which actually is got out of uh, crude oil right and um, we uh, uh, this is the structure you can see three carbon atoms and one carbon atom is two hydrogen uh, bonds with two hydrogen atoms other carbon and between these two carbon atoms you have a double bond and one carbon atom has a single hydrogen atom and the third carbon atom is three hydrogen atoms right so this is uh, yeah okay well, I mean right now you feel so the student is saying it's very complex yes uh, you feel it is complex because you have not learned organic chemistry once you learn or organic chemistry right when somebody says propene, you'll be able to directly write how, uh, what will be the bonds and how it will look like because you would have learned the science of organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is a very organized chemistry because it has got very, very fixed rules and every compound and every molecule will follow those rules. So we are very clear about it. So once you learn the rules of organic chemistry, let me tell you, it will be very easy for you to remember about all these. So don't worry about it. Right now it may look a bit complex, but once you learn organic chemistry, it becomes very simple, right? And don't worry, I'm there with you. I'll be also I'll I'll be I'll be also teaching you uh, as and when we go go forward, and you'll be learning things, discovering more and more things, and I'll be your friend. Okay? All right. Now, so this is propene. Now, uh, let us go into uh, the the polypropene. Polypropene is if I polymerize this propylene, uh, uh, propene, then what I get is polypropene. Now, how does that look like, right? The polypropene. So the polypropene looks like this. So here you have the propene atom. You saw the three carbon atoms, two double uh, between. Two of them, there is a double bond, the other one a single bond, and so this is nothing but CH3 part, this is CH2 part, and this is a CH part, right? So this is propene, right? Now, when multiple of these propene atoms combine, when the multiple of the propene atoms combine, this is how it looks like. And this is this forms a chain, which is nothing but the polypropene. So this is basically the, sorry? Yeah, so this is the polypropene. So this is a polypropene and this is nothing but a chain of multiple propene atoms which are polymerized or changed together. So this is the monomer, right? So this is the monomer. And this is the polymer. So, so this is basically about polypropene. And so, uh, if you write the chemical formula, it looks like this. So, you have CH3, CH, CH, N, right? And so, that's basically what it is. Okay. 
that becomes a chain this is a chain yeah so this becomes so this becomes one molecule this becomes other molecule and it becomes a chain of molecules all right so here you can see the base unit right the base unit is this this is the base unit and you can see that base unit getting repeated everywhere right so you can see the base unit getting repeated everywhere and that becomes a chain of propene molecules which gives the polypropene so Yes, and many polypropene molecules combine together to form polypropene. So that's a simple propene. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, that is about polypropene. Right now, the next thing what we talked about was benzene. Right? Uh, benzene is another very uh, interesting um, uh, organic compound. This, this is how it looks like. It may look a bit complex, but very interesting. Right? Extremely interesting and. Uh, uh, you know, when I learned benzene the first time, I fell in love with this compound. Look at its molecular structure; it looks so beautiful, right? So symmetric. Uh, we have a hexagon of carbon atoms, and each carbon atom has an attach, attached hydrogen atom, right? So this is this is. Um, a, if you look at the chemical uh, formula, is CSC6H6. That is what is benzene, right? And this is how. The structures you can see that the alternate double bond and single bond, double bond, single bond, double bond, single bond, alternate double bond and single bond, and for all carbon atoms you have a hydrogen attached to it, right? So this is what is benzene. It's a very interesting compound, right? And uh, uh, a very important compound too. We actually make several. Yeah, and uh, it, it's a it's a very interesting thing, and there are several um, compounds uh, which can be made out of benzene. And benzene is an extremely important compound it's in. Like a uh, yeah, so that's true. So uh, the student is saying it looks like a snowflake because it's got it's got a hexagonal shape, right? Uh, so uh, the the thing is from benzene. Uh, how is benzene uh, in chemical? Yeah, so the, chem the the chemical formula of benzene is C six, H six. That's what is benzene. Okay, C six H six. Now again, I'm not getting into pol. I'm not going to show you how the polymerization of benzene looks like. It it look it look pretty complex, right? The polymerization of benzene will be pretty complex. And uh, and uh, one example of a polymer made out of uh, benzene is called polystyrene. Polystyrene is an example of uh, uh, a polymer made out of benzene, right? Uh, polystyrene is. Uh, the, uh, uh, is is this clear? Uh, any any questions on this? Yes, correct. That's the way it is. So that is the speciality of benzene's molecular structure. So it is made like that. It is. That's the way benzene is. Right. If we didn't have the single bond and double bond like this, it is no more benzene. It's something else. Polystyrene is actually a polymer made out of benzene. Okay, polystyrene is a polymer made out of benzene. Okay, all right. So that is about uh, benzene, right? I am getting into the next one, which is toluene, right? In fact, toluene is made out of benzene. It's a polymer made out of benzene, right? Now, if you look at toluene, toluene is made out of benzene. If you can look at this part of toluene right you see this this part it is actually benzene right but what has happened there was a hydrogen which was replaced by a ch2 group the hydrogen of this carbon was replaced carbon atom was replaced by a ch2 group this is a ch2 group and that leads to formation of toluene this, this uh, big part over here mm. looks like uh, the benzene yeah so this is the benzene part and one carbon atom but its hydrogen was replaced by CH2 group, and that lead to formation of toluene. Again, toluene can be polymerized, and uh, there are polymers created out of toluene, right? So all these are examples of petroleum products. We have looked at ethene, propene, benzene, toluene. All these are petroleum products which are got from uh, um, crude oil in different stages, and these can be polymerized to form different types of polymers. Okay.
So uh, that's about toluene. This is a benzene. One carbon atom's hydrogen was replaced by the CH2 group. Benzene combining with CH2. Ah, so the benzene's one of the carbon atoms hydrogen was replaced by the CH2 group. That gave gave the toluene. Okay. All right. So that is about uh, toluene, right? And uh, Okay, so chemically it is written as follows. This is how it is written. Because this this is benzene. Right? So chemically this is how we write toluene. Okay? All right. So, um, so there is alternate uh, a single and double bond that shows the benzene, and then you have a CH2. Okay. All right. So that's about toluene. Now let us get into the next. Uh, so that is about the different uh, materials from which polymerization is done. Now there are two type. Uh, there are there there are. The, the, now, how is this polymers created? The polymers can be created either uh, by what you call direct polymerization. Direct polymerization. This is an example of direct polymerization. Or it can be and then it is also get converted into CH3 So let, let, let us see. Let us see what is direct polymerization. In direct polymerization, what is done is the monomers are directly polymerized. So if you look at polyethene, polypropene, the two examples where I showed, that is direct polymerization, where the monomers were taken and directly like we polymerized. Discussed, like, uh, like we discussed in the, in the first session of uh, the hospital in Kazakhstan last week. Yes. We saw that they were, uh, that the polychlorothene molecules were yes. uh, Absolutely. So the student was saying, very nice, absolutely. Another example is polychlorothene which we saw in the first uh, uh, session where I, I gave an example of polymerization. Again, it's direct polymerization. The monomer is directly linked together in a chain to form a polymer. That is direct polymerization, right? But whereas, if you look at polystyrene or polyurethane, all these are examples which, uh, which are uh, polymers for produced from benzene. They are not of direct polymerization. What happens is the benzene goes through some reaction and some monomer is created and that monomer is polymerized. So it is not direct polymerization of uh, benzene. From benzene, so, some benzene go, goes through some reactions, it creates another compound, that becomes a monomer and that monomer is polymerized. So that is basically the example of polystyrene. So if you look at polystyrene, right? So what is happening is if you look at benzene, so this is benzene, right? So the benzene goes to some reaction, creates, uh, through the reaction it creates a monomer and that monomer is polymerized. So it is not direct polymerization. Right? There are stages before polymerization happens. So the raw material is taken, it goes through certain reactions, it produces a monomer and that monomer is polymerized. So if you like look at polystyrene, another example is polyurethane. Polyurethane. Okay, now polyurethane is again, uh, the raw material is benzene, but it goes through certain reactions to produce a monomer and that monomer is polymerized. So it is again not a, a direct polymerization. So you have you have direct polymerization and non-direct polymerization. Both are possible, and I just want to talk about. I just want to give examples. So if you look at polythene, polyethene, polypropene, polychloroethene, all these are examples of direct polymerization. Whereas polystyrene, polyurethane, all those are not direct polymerization. There the raw material goes through certain reactions, it produces monomer, and that monomer is polymerized. 
right? So there are multiple stages. So that is uh, that is about direct polymerization and non-direct polymerization. Okay. I hope that's clear. All right. So uh, so we discuss about some of these interesting raw materials: benzene, toluene, propene, ethene, and all that. Right now, let us get into uh, kinds of synthetic plastics. There are two types, two uh, two classifications of synthetic plastics. One is the thermoplastic, and the other is thermosetting plastic. Right now, what is the difference between thermoplastic and thermosetting plastic? Now, if you look at thermoplastic, the synthetic plastics in which materials are obtained by gently heating and then molding. The molded materials can be reused by gently heating and remolding. So, see, I can take the plastic, I can gently heat it, melt it, mold it into a certain shape. Then, if I feel no, this shape is not what I want, I can again heat it, melt it, remold it to a different shape. So that is thermoplastics, right? So polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, polystyrene, nylon, terylene, all these are examples of thermoplastics because they can be remolded into different different shapes. So I, I for, so if you look at uh, this example, this video, um, this is actually a plastic molding machine which which hope hobby is used to mold plastic, right? And. Uh, you can see this is the granules of a thermoplastic, which could be, for example, polyethylene or polystyrene, right? And uh, he puts that in. Now, what is happening is this, 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 uh, what do you call the globules of plastic gets it, it melts, and it, and once it melts, that melted one is injected into this mold, the mold that you have. This is a mold, right? So injected into the mold. And when it is injected in the mold, it takes a shape in, uh, which is there inside the mold, and that that is what, and then it, it cools down, and then you get the plastic in that shape, right? So let us see what happens. I have seen seen this before. It's I've shown, melting. yes. So it's melting, and you can see the some portion of that melted plastic which came out of the mold also. Now, if he allowed it to cool down for a moment, for a few minutes, and then when he opens, you can see the plastic which has been molded in that shape, right? Now. He finds out no, the star shape is not what I want. What I can, what he can do is he can again heat it and melt it and remold it into a different shape, the same plastic. So that's that it can be remolded multiple times, right? So that is what is the speciality of thermoplastic. The thermoplastic can be reheated, melted, and remolded multiple times without any problems, right? So that is thermoplastic. So poly polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, polystyrene, nylon, tyrolene, all these are things which we have discussed before, right? All these are thermoplastics. But what about thermosetting plastics? Thermosetting plastics are plastics which can be generally heated and molded, but once it is molded, you cannot remold it. That shape is fixed. You cannot remold it. You cannot heat it and remold it. For example, once this uh, after doing it once you cannot do it again. For example, look at this the switch uh, board that we have. It is thermosetting plastic. It cannot be remolded. That shape is fixed. You cannot heat it and uh, uh, melt it and remold it into some other shape because it's thermosetting plastic, right? Switch. The switch board, correct? I'm just giving you an example. This light holder, that is wood. So this light holder, right? Or if you look at, you can see this. This is a three-pin plug. This is made of plastic. Again, example of a thermosetting plastic. I cannot heat this and melt it and remold it, right? So these are all examples of thermosetting plastic. Again, this is again uh, a remote. Again, is thermosetting plastic, right? So um, so these are all examples of thermosetting plastics, right? Uh, now, so example is bakelite, polyurethane, and malamine. Malamine is very common uh, for using dining dinner plates, dining plates, cups. All those we use malamine. It's again a thermosetting plastic. Polyurethane is a thermosetting plastic, right? Uh, bakelite, another uh, thermosetting plastic. So all these are examples of thermosetting plastics. Whereas thermoplastics are polyethylene, polypropene, polyvinyl chloride, polystyrene, all these are examples of thermoplastics.
right so these are the two classifications so i have for example if you look at thermosetting plastics the tv cabinet the reason is you know tv cabinet just gets hot it really gets hot when the when you see tv for a while you can see that if you touch the uh, the the body of the tv you will feel it's it's hot now if it's thermoplastic it will melt and it will lose its shape so the plastic should be able to withstand a very high temperature right so the plastic should be able to withstand very high temperature and that can only happen that can only happen if it is um, a thermosetting plastic so thermosetting plastics can withstand higher temperatures right and that is the uh, importance of thermosetting plastics okay so i hope uh, that's clear let us go ahead with the discussion right uh, so now i want to uh, talk about why why this difference in property between the thermoplastic and thermosetting plastics so i told you thermosetting plastics can be remolded right correct Thermo Th uh, sorry thermoplastics can be remolded thanks for correcting me uh, student so thermoplastic can be remolded whereas thermosetting plastic cannot be remolded why the difference the difference is because the arrangement of the monomers in the two polymers are different right if you look at uh, if you look at now what is what do you mean by that right now look at look, look at the, poly, uh, the thermoplastics in thermoplastics the arrangement of the monomers are linear now i will show you for example polyethylene see it's a linear arrangement it you have a chain of monomers together you can have a you're having a chain of monomers together and it's a linear arrangement it's like straight lines right whereas if you look at the thermosetting plastic it is cross linked you can see so many cross links between criss cross network right its criss cross links are there and because of this criss cross links it cannot be remolded right so if you look at thermosetting pl plastics you have the cross link the plastic has got lost of cross linkages you can see the cross link this way that way that way this way this way this way that way that way whereas if you look at the thermoplastics you don't have those cross links right so you are having linear arrangement of monomers whereas in the case of thermosetting plastics you have cross linkages between the monomers right and because of that is why the property of the uh, of remolding is possible in thermoplastics but not possible in thermosetting plastics is what happens right i hope that i could make it very clear why the what is the difference right uh, so in the case of thermoplastic it's a linear arrangement of monomers whereas in thermosetting plastics cross links are in cross linked arrangement of monomers as i showed in the diagram right so uh Uh, example is polyurethane, bakelite, malamine. All these are examples of thermosetting plastics, right? Uh, all right. Okay. So the student asked me question: What are the examples of thermosetting plastic? Is bakelite, polyurethane, uh, and uh, malamine, right? So all these are examples of uh, thermosetting plastics. Okay. Excellent. So we have looked at uh, the two classifications, thermoplastic and thermosetting plastics, and we also discussed why they are different, why they have those behaviors. We saw uh, thermoplastics have linear arrangement of monomers, whereas thermosetting plastics have cross-linked arrangement of monomers, and it is because of that there is that difference in property. And I showed you a diagram on what does that mean, linear arrangement versus cross-linked arrangements. All right. Now. Uh, let us get into discussing some common plastics that we see in uh, on a day to day basis right and what are their properties and what they are used for the first example which i have talked about is polyethylene we have already discussed polyethylene that formed out of direct polymerization of ethene uh, ethene which is a monomer and um, uh, they, they, it is actually a thermoplastic which basically means that uh, the uh, polymer has got uh, linear uh, uh, linear arrangement of the monomers right and uh, it is made out of the ethylene or ethene it's not ethene it's et e e e ethene okay so uh, please uh, read this as ethene not ethene this is ethene okay 
So it is made out of polymer polymerization of ethylene or ethene gas, which is actually a petroleum product, right? Now, what are the properties? Insolvable in all kinds of solvents. So it, it, it typically doesn't dissolve in acids or bases, right? It is insoluble in most of the solvents. Does not get attacked by strong chemicals. So it's pretty much resistant to many acids and strong bases, right? But the issue is it is non-biodegradable. Right, so, so any kind of synthetic fiber is non-biodegradable. Yeah, more yes, correct. Uh, the plastics are typically non-biodegradable. But now, after research, there is a new category of part plastics which is called biodegradable plastics, which have been invented. So if you look at many shops now, have started using biodegradable plastics, right? But we are not discussing that in this in this uh, session, right? So when you use plastics, when you use plastic bags, ask a shopkeeper, is this biodegradable? If it is not biodegradable, don't use it. Try to take a bag from home. Try to take. I, I, when I go for vegetable and grocery shops, shopping, I take jute bags with me. Right? I take jute bags with me so that I don't use plastic bags. Why? Because plastic bags are non-biodegradable. It produces a lot of pollution and problems. Yeah, it it produces a lot of pollution and problems because and it stays there. Uh, forever without uh, any degradation. Yeah. Okay. Now, what are the uses? Bags are used for typically the, those plastic bags that you you get from shops. They are used polyethylene bags, right? Use of uh, throw cups, bottles, all these bottles, then plastic cups that you use in parties. All these are again uh, uh, biodegradable. Uh, biodegradable uh, I mean, uh, sorry, uh, polyethylene uh, made of polyethylene. Uh, installation of the uh, uh, electric wires, right? If you look at most of the electric wires, they have, as you've seen, has got a plastic coating. Why? They are insulators. They are non. Plastics are non-conductors of electricity. They don't conduct electricity, right? Because they are non-conductors of electricity, they are very good insulators, which can be used for coating. We are pretty cheap insulators, which can be used for coating copper wires and aluminium wires, right? So again, another uh, example of usage of uh, polyethylene. Uh, Anti-corrosive coat, uh, coating in articles made of iron and copper, right? Uh, I in fact would like to show you uh, one uh, example of what this coating means, right? Uh, which is uh, used in pipelines. Now these are the kind of uh, coatings that we do in chemical industry. You can see this coating inside. So this this uh, pipe may be carrying a very corrosive material. It could be a, for example, an acid, right? Now, uh, if uh, the, the these acids can directly react with the metal because this pipe is is made out of maybe steel, right? So what they do is they give a anti-corrosive coating within the pipe, and that is typically usually plastic coating because the plastics. Are, will not react with acids. So it gives a protective coating to the steel pipe, right? So that the steel pipe doesn't get corroded. So this is an example of non corrosive coating which can be uh, given using plastic. So here, if you look at this, is actually a plastic lining. This is a plastic lining. which is non-corrosive, right? So because of this, even though the, the liquid which is flowing through the, the pipe could be, for example, an acid, it will not corrode the pipe because there is a protective coating which is given above the pipe, which typically could be a plastic coating because the plastic doesn't react with the, with the, with the uh, corrosive liquid which is flowing through. So this is an, another uh, usage of plastics uh, to give uh, anti-corrosive coating uh, inside pipelines and so on. Okay. So this is about polyethylene, a very common plastic which is used uh, by and formed out of polymerization of ethene or ethylene. And we have seen the properties and some of the uses. Uh, next one I would like to talk about is propene, polypropene. Again, one thing we discussed about that uh, uh, just now, right? About polypropene, Polymerize, made out of polymerization of propene, which is again a petroleum product. What are the uses? It is used for those plastic ropes. Have you seen plastic ropes? 
uh, which is used many many places used for trekking and uh, mountain climbing and all sorts of places those plastic ropes are made out of polypropene right then packing materials for packing where the uh, the electronic goods and all that for pa the material with which a packing is made is again polypropene right uh, synthetic carpets uh, in many hotels you can see synthetic carpets the advantage of synthetic carpets is that it is very easy to maintain them when compared to woolen carpets right so uh, but of course it may not give the look of a woolen carpet but it serves a purpose right it it does give the uh, the warmth of the floor and all that it's easy to maintain so synthetic carpets are again made using polypropene right body, body of uh, automobile batteries right uh, so i want to actually uh, quickly show you these examples right so So this is a synthetic rope, right? Made out of polypropene. So this is uh, what I am talking about, the rope, right? This kind of ropes, which is used very often, very pretty strong, very strong ropes. Usually don't react with acids and all that stuff, right? So pretty good uh, thing, which is used in industry also, right? The the propene, the polypropene ropes. Uh, the other example is the automobile battery casing. You know, automobile battery, as you know, inside many of these lead acid battery inside has got sulfuric acid, very very corrosive. You cannot use a metal casing because metal will react with sulfuric acid. So um, that is where the polypropene casing is used because it is not, it's, it, it's not uh, it cannot be corroded by the acid. So um, so you can see this this casing, right? This blue and the white casing that you're seeing. It is made of polypropene. So, as you said, there is sulfuric acid. There is sulfuric acid, right? Usually, usually the acid uses sulfuric acid, and uh, these acids are, as you know, very corrosive. So, if I uh, use a metal casing, within no time the metal will react and uh, the casing will uh, corrode, get rusted, right? But since polypropene, uh, the plastic, it is not a property where most of the strong chemicals cannot corrode it, cannot, will not react with it, and because of it, say. So most of the batteries, the casing is made out of polypropene, right? Even the, including the, uh, the, as the, the, the as a battery in my car, which is made of Excide, even that, the casing is polypropene, okay? So uh, another example of a very common plastic which is used, polypropene. So polyethene we have seen, polypropene we have seen, polyvinyl chloride, right? This is again a polymer which we discussed by the, uh, before, right? If we are made out of polymerization of vinyl chloride or chloroethene, right? The chloroethene polymerization forms a polyvinyl chloride and it is very, very commonly used for various purposes. One very, very common usage of polyvinyl chloride is vinyl flooring. You might have heard about vinyl flooring. I don't know whether you've heard about vinyl flooring is synthetic flooring, right? Very easy to maintain, very easy to clean, gives a very good look right so see so you can see this looks like wood right but it's not wood it is vinyl flooring right you can see this looks really like wood people think oh this is wood but it is not it is vinyl it is made out of polyvinyl chloride and it can be given different colors different patterns again see another example of uh, vinyl flooring it looks really like wood flooring but it is not right so this is an example of uh, of vinyl flooring which is very very commonly used these days very easy to maintain pretty cheap if i have to do wood flooring like that it is very expensive but i get the same look appearance but far cheaper flooring vinyl flooring polyvinyl chloride is used and it can give different coloring and all that so that you can make it feel like wood make it feel like marble granite all these different types of finish you can give right so again, um, that is a very common use, vinyl flooring. Uh, when next time when you hear vinyl, oh, that is polyvinyl chloride, I should say, right? So I've learned about it. And uh, even in the second, in using asbestos flooring, is, it, is that also vinyl? Uh, so the question is, the, the, the flooring which is there in the first floor of our house is not vinyl, it is proper wood flooring, okay? So uh, all right, now the other example is soles of the shoes. The shoe, the shoe soles. Um, 
that there are two types of resurrection soils. One is using polyvinyl chloride. The other is using um, the rubber, vulcanized rubber. So it depends. So, but uh, you know, there are many sport shoes and all that which is made using the soles made using polyvinyl chloride. Other very exa good example PVC pipes. All the pipes, the plastic pipes that you see now your houses, right? The uh, for water pipes and drainage pipes and all that. I mean, several of them that you see in your houses are all polyvinyl chloride pipes. PVC, it's called PVC pipes, and the PVC pipes is nothing but polyvinyl chloride pipes. So all the plastic pipes that is used at home, they are all uh, polyvinyl chloride pipes. So very common plastic used for uh, the other thing is using uh, used for many things, raincoats, uh, handbags, uh, you know, synthetic handbags. So it it will really look like leather, right? It looks like leather, but it is polyvinyl chloride, right? So all these are examples of usage of polyvinyl chloride. The the other very uh, uh, good example is tet uh, poly tetrafluoroethylene Teflon, uh, and uh, the example for Teflon is uh, I don't know whether you've seen the non-stick pans, right? I want, I want to show you a non-stick pan, which is used in cooking. So this is a non-stick pan, right? Which is very often used by uh, your mother for cooking. The reason is nothing sticks to it, so it's very easy to cook in that. This coating inside, this black coating that you see inside, this actually is made out of steel. Uh, but the black coating that you see inside is made out of poly tetrafluoroethylene. Right? The advantage of that it it makes it non-sticky. So food materials, even though it gets hot, doesn't stick. If that coating is not there, it will start sticking, and then you will be forced to put lot more oil. So that it doesn't stick, but here you can use only one or two drops of oil and cook the food. So it it leads to healthy cooking, right? And uh, the food material doesn't stick. It's very easy to clean the stuff, right, and all that. So this coating inside, right? This coating inside of the black stuff is uh, Teflon, Teflon coating. Coating. It's also called real chemical name is poly tetra. Fluoroethylene, poly tetrafluoroethylene. That is what is Teflon. And so this is a very common example of uh, Teflon coating in the cooking utensils, right? Um, that is one very good example. The other example is Teflon is used as lubricants. I don't know. Uh, I might have talked about. I don't know whether you attended my friction session there. I spoke about if I lubricate. Between two surfaces, the coefficient of friction comes down, so frictional force reduces. So, for lubricating, one of the lubricants which is very uh, uh, often used in in the industry is Teflon, right? It can be used as a lubricant, right? So, uh, common usage of Teflon, one is for non-stick coating for the cooking utensils, the other is as lubricants, right? To reduce the coefficient of friction between surfaces. Clear? Any questions? So that is about uh, poly uh, fluoro uh, uh, poly tetrafluoroethylene, right? And uh, the next one is polystyrene. Uh, and polystyrene is in fact uh, produced out of uh, benzene, as I told you, but non-direct polymerization, right? And polystyrene is very uh, often used um, because it, it, it's a thermoplastic. What do you mean by thermoplastic? What is the difference between thermostat plastic and thermosetting plastic? Correct, remolded, right? So thermoplastic can be remolded. So polystyrene is a thermoplastic, so it can be remolded again and again, right? Now, when air is born, blown through a polystyrene, it forms a light form which is excellent insulating and uh, packing materials. So I'll tell you an example of polystyrene. Right, polystyrene is used uh, in uh, many AC halls. Right, uh, let me tell you uh, why it is used for. I I would try to show you how it is. AC insulation polystyrene.
Yeah. So here you can see uh, the example of what I'm talking about, right? So So this is actually what I'm talking about. This is uh, this is a kind of form that can be produced. It, it, it is it's like uh, it looks like sponge. It will be looking like a sponge, right? And it is made of polystyrene. And these insulation sheets are actually put around the AC room so that the uh, the heat from in outside doesn't come in, so that it remains cool. Right, so this kind of uh, thermal insulation uh, can be done using polystyrene. And other thing is in in uh, industry, but cold things. Other thing is you know, um, uh, if you look at AC, right, um, you will have the AC compressor which which cools down the air, and that air has to be supplied across the building, and the pipe through which the cold air goes that gets that is around that pipes you will have the polystyrene form so that the air doesn't get heated up because of the hot heat going into the pipe right so polystyrene form is used uh, for insulation thermal insulation right so that's an example of uh, usage of uh, polystyrene uh, it is used for packing materials right for packing uh, materials it's used and making containers like ice box right i don't know if you've seen ice box for uh, this is uh, i'll show you an ice box very quickly that allows you to keep ice for a long time without melting right uh, outside the fridge so these are ice boxes right and this ice boxes again uh, is uh, can is made out of polystyrene This is an ice box, so you can see the, the 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 ice can be kept inside for a long time, even though it's outside fridge. Now, why is that so? Because there's this actually acts as a thermal insulation, doesn't heat allow the heat to go in from outside, right? So because of that, the ice remains like ice for a long time. So this is, this is how it looks like inside. You can put the ice inside that. You can see that this this is a thick one. Actually, in fact, it's a hollow one inside between the. Uh, so you have so it's like this. The ice box, ice box is like this. So if I take the cross section of the ice box, it's like that, right? And in between there is some space. Here you have polystyrene. I have polystyrene here, right? So that that acts as the insulation, so that the heat from outside doesn't go in. So that's that's how it's used in ice box. So that's other example, and it's also used for packing material, uh, expensive items like TV and all that. So the packing material is usually polystyrene, right? So you've seen Teflon, polytetrafluoroethene, and also polystyrene two examples uh, another of another common plastics. Now uh, I want to talk about some of the issues of using plastics, right? So for that, I want to talk about what is non-biodegradable uh, materials and biodegradable materials. Non-biodegradable materials are the ones which do not decompose, which do not. Just to underline, do not decompose. Do not. Yeah. So more. Yeah. It does not decompose because of natural process. What is the natural process? Action of bacteria, right? So. Uh, the the materials like vegetables, fruits, and all that they decay, right? What is decay? Natural process of degradation, where the bacteria, fungi, and all acts on it, and it de it breaks those complex organic compounds into simpler compounds, and ultimately can dissolve into the soil, right? So that is decay or degradation, biodegradation. But the plastics are non-biodegradable. The, the natural process doesn't know how to degrade plastics, how to biodegrade the plastics into simpler uh, compounds and absorb it back into the soil, right? So that's the biggest problem. So examples of plastics, aluminum, right, artificial fibers, um, metal cans, all these are examples of non-biodegradable materials. 
whereas materials which decompose through natural process such as action of bacteria are biodegradable like vegetables fruits paper wool cotton all these are examples of biodegradable materials which gets degraded right because of actions action of uh, uh, because of the action of uh, oops, just a moment okay because of the action of uh, bacteria and fungi the natural uh, organisms right so uh, that is one of the key issues of um, of of plastics plastics are non biodegradable so what can you do about it right now how to control problems caused by plastics when shopping carry cotton or jute bags with you avoid using plastic bags right do not mix plastic waste with biodegradable waste because uh, the idea is that if you keep the the plastic waste separate the plastic waste can be taken most of the plastics are thermoplastic so they can be um, you know reused there is what is called recycling that plastic is again melted then i can create other things out of the same plastic right because most of the plastic are thermoplastic polyethylene poly uh, propene you know polystyrene all these things that you have usually use daily to day basis can be recycled it can be heated again melted and again reshaped into something else so that recycling can be done so if i segregate between plastic waste and non plastic waste that's why if you look at our kitchen and you can see there are two uh, dustbins one for plastic waste i have written right about plastic waste and the other one organic waste which are biodegradable waste so biodegradable waste what i can do i can take it and uh, and create compost and um, that it, so and put um, you know uh, and create a compost and uh, create manure of it out of it and use that uh, for um, fertilizing as a fertilizer natural fertilizer right whereas the uh, non biodegradable plastic waste i can recycle and reuse that right so that is the other thing which i should do so do not throw plastic bags into roads why because the plastic bags will get into the drainage block the drainage right and that will be a problem so the four r's which are typically important which is which the environmental scientists talk about the four r's is reduce reduce usage of plastic reuse the plastic if you are using it try to reuse segregate the plastic waste from uh, biodegradable waste take the plastic waste and try to recycle it and reuse it so reuse it recycle it and then recover it right so the four r's which the engineering uh, the environmental scientists talk about is reduce reuse recycle and recover so that is very very important when you talk about usage of plastics plastics are now becoming a big headache for human beings and we should always try as much as possible not to use plastic okay i think with this we are finishing this uh, topic of uh, synthetic plastics and fibers i hope you found the session useful again i want to just talk, mention about uh, uh, the navu website http colon slash slash navu study dot wordpress dot com is our website if you have any emails and this website also has a link to the google plus uh, community where you can be part of and if you want to send any mails to us now you study dot study dot study dot at gmail dot com is our website please um, uh, i mean is our email id please do visit i would like to also take you quickly to that uh, website uh, so that you can see the website uh, here we go uh, it has got all the uh, various uh, videos and all that that we have done till now and i keep updating that with all the newer videos so this is the navu website So this is our website. Please do visit it, and you can see the videos here for class seven, class eight videos are are slowly coming up. 
right you have forms to submit questions request for google plus uh, if you want to have a direct video conference with me where you want to directly interact with me have face to face and ask questions you can use a google plus session please request for a google plus session and i can schedule that and um, and, and that's it so uh, with that we are done have a great day and uh, you know we'll we'll come back with more and more sessions and have fun learning science and mathematics bye bye